topic for today is blood and uh, the song my blood runs cold my memory has just been sold my angel is a centerfold I don't know why I always think about that song when we talk about blood but I do uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about uh, the overall functions of blood first there are three uh, blood's job in your body is to transport things like nutrients and waste Blood uh, carries body heat around. Uh, the, if you measure your internal temperature, uh, it's quite a bit higher than 98.6 degrees. And of course, we use blood. Your body will expand blood vessels to both get rid of heat and to heat up parts of your body that might be cold. Uh, the, and another thing uh, blood is really good for is for immunity. From disease and white blood cells are really important with that so let's take a look at the parts of blood uh, there are formed elements there are three kinds of what we call formed elements erythrocytes erythro means red erith means red leukocytes white blood cells Excuse me while I get a pen. Erythrocytes, red blood cells. Leuco means white, white blood cells. Platelets, and then the liquid part of blood. Uh, plasma, okay, uh, that carries around proteins and other things that we'll talk about with immunity. If you take a look at figures 10.4 and 10.5 in your text, uh, they look something like this. Uh, this diagram shows how red blood cells are formed. Red blood cells are formed in the bone marrow. Well, actually, all blood cells are formed in the bone marrow. And uh, they all start out as a stem cell in the bone marrow. And what you see in this diagram here is different chemicals produced by the body will give rise to different blood cells. So. For example, if the stem cell is treated with erythropoietin, also known as EPO, red blood cells are produced. If you treat it with TPO interleukin-1, a megakaryocyte develops that disintegrates into platelets, and so on. So a single stem cell can become many. There are actually 50 different kinds of white blood cells alone. And we're only looking at a few in this class. So uh, briefly about red blood cells. They are tiny. There are 5 million per milliliter or cubic centimeter of blood. We've talked about this before in this class. Hemoglobin carries oxygen. Red blood cells have this specific donut-like shape that increases their surface area. One red blood cell carries 250 hemoglobin molecules. So think about that. You have 5 million red blood cells in a cubic centimeter, uh, which is a milliliter of blood. Each red blood cell carries 250 million hemoglobin. Each hemoglobin carries four oxygen molecules, which means one billion oxygen molecules per red blood cell, or five million billion oxygen molecules per milliliter. That's pretty incredible numbers. Leukocytes are white blood cells. There are quite a few less leukocytes or white blood cells per milliliter than red blood cells. So you can see here there is between 400 and 11,000 red blood cells per milliliter of blood. And there are different types of red blood cells. We're going to do a lab on formed elements in which we'll look at this. The uh, interesting thing about white blood cells is they are chemosensitive. They can sort of smell different chemicals that are emitted by cells in response to pathogens. Pathogens are things that cause disease. And they can actually crawl like an amoeba to the site. And you don't know if you know what an amoeba looks like. An amoeba is kind of like this 
blob organism. And I'm not sure what's wrong with my ink right now. A sort of blob organism that can move. And we'll take a look at this when we get back in class. And the cool thing about white blood cells is they can actually go in and out of blood vessels pretty much at will. Platelets. On this diagram here, you see red blood cells and you see platelets. Platelets are, there's about 3,000 platelets per milliliter of blood and they're useful in blood clotting, which we'll come back to in a little bit when we talk about how blood clots. So this diagram is in your textbook and it would do you well to know it. Okay, if you blood clots when you cut a blood vessel open. Okay, now sometimes you cut a blood vessel under your skin and so it will bleed under your skin and create a dried blood area called a bruise. You do that quite a bit. You don't really realize it happens. You might break a capillary or a small vein or an arteriole or something and you'll bleed out under your skin. Okay, you can also cut the surface and obviously cut open your skin cutting through blood vessels at the same time. When you do that, uh, when you cut open a blood vessel, blood is leaking out of the vessel. That's the whole idea. So you need to stop it. Well, the first thing that happens is platelets stick to the edges of the blood vessel. They'll stick on and to the edges of the blood vessel. And if it's a small enough opening, they'll plug it up themselves. Okay? Now, if it's a bigger opening, uh, the platelets release a chemical called serotonin, which causes the vessels to constrict. When the vessels constrict, of course, it says vascular spasms occur. So in other words, they constrict close, so not as much blood can get out. Platelets release more chemicals that attract more platelets. So you get a few platelets, they release chemicals that attract more platelets, we called that early in the year positive feedback. Then comes uh, blood coagulation. That's when blood stops, starts to kind of clot up. Okay? And you don't need to memorize all this, but just understand there's a sequence of events that happens. Okay? The first part of the sequence is damaged cells release a chemical called thromboplastin. That plus a chemical on platelets activates something called prothrombin. Prothrombin activates a protein floating around in your blood called thrombin. Thrombin in your blood is a protein called fibrinogen. And it's floating around in your bloodstream in a liquid state. It's soluble, it's dissolved in the liquid, in the plasma. After this cascade of events, fibrin is produced. Fibrin are those little stringy things that cover up an opening, okay, and so you get this fibrin produced that kind of plugs up the opening with these little strings and traps red blood cells behind it. So the cascade of events is platelets release chemicals that cause more platelets, damaged cells release a chemical plus the platelets make fibrin be produced, this solid that kind of plugs up the openings. That's a summary of blood clotting in a damaged blood vessel. You've often heard of blood clots maybe as a bad thing. That's when you get this kind of cascade of events, but it happens in an unbroken vessel. And when it happens in an unbroken vessel, the, the clot can move along and plug up somewhere important. And we can talk about that a little bit later on. Last thing to talk about with blood is blood groups. And mostly for transfusion purposes in this class. We're not going to really get into the genetics of it. But there are four blood groups in the United States. AB blood, B blood, A blood, and O blood. O blood is called the universal donor. O blood can donate to anyone. A blood, AB blood is called the universal recipient. 
They can receive blood from anybody. B blood can only receive from B and O. A blood can only receive from A and O. And we want to talk briefly about why that is. AB blood has on its surface things called antigens. Antigens are proteins that occur on the surface of every cell in your body. So they occur on the surface of every cell in your body. Your body recognizes self or non-self using these. And this will be important when we talk about the immune system next week. So your cells, a, if you have AB blood, you have both A antigens on the surface and B antigens on the surface. If you have type B blood, you have only B antigens on your surface. If you have A blood, you have only type A antigens on your surface. And if you have O blood, you have both. You have none. No antigens on the surface. What does this mean? Well, in your immune system, you produce proteins called antibodies. Antibodies fight off foreign things. So, if you are B blood, you produce antibodies against A blood. And what these antibodies do is you see they have the same kind of shape. So a, here's, a, a, here's a person with A blood, and the anti-A antibody will grab onto it and grab onto another A blood and make them kind of clot together. So if you try to put A blood here into an A person, these antibodies will grab on and clump all the blood together. So, a type B blood person produces anti-A antibodies. A type A blood person produces anti-B antibodies. If you're O, you produce both. Because you don't have either one. If you're AB, you don't produce any. So, if you're type AB blood and somebody puts the wrong, quote, wrong blood in you, your body won't attack it. It's a little bit confusing. I hope it'll make a little more sense later. So and this slide goes into kind of the genetics of it. We're not going to spend a lot of time on it. But just so you know, A and B are dominant to O. So type O blood is recessive, which is kind of weird if you know anything about recessive genes because you would think there would be more there would be less O blood than anything else, but that's not the case. That the recessive characteristic is actually more of it in the United States population. One other thing about blood types is the RH factor. There are also antigens on the surface called Rh antigens. If you have it on the surface of your blood, so here's your blood cell, let's say you're type A. Positive. If you're type A positive, you also have these little Rh antigens on the surface. If you don't have it, so this would be A positive. This person is O negative. They have no antibody antigens on their surface, and they have no Rh. If they have no Rh, they make Rh antibodies. So this person will make antibodies against the Rh. So if you try to put R if you try to put A positive blood into an O negative person, that will not work. The positive and negative is important in blood transfusions, but as we'll see later, it's also important in pregnancy. It's also important for pregnant mothers. That is a summary of blood and blood types.